Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnifolk, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at the Slowbro deck, the three strikes shenanigans dot deck. The idea is to try and spam Slowbro as much as possible, flipping three coins, doing a hundred for each heads. We of course have a couple Victory Star Victinis in here to try and manipulate those coin flips in our favour. If we do flip three tails, you lose the game, so there's the big meme right there. This is obviously not a competitive deck at all. Uh, the only real selling point of Slowbro is he's a non-GX that's water type, so he can be reasonable against Reshizard. Uh, even then, they play EV Snorlax, so you still need to flip three heads against them with three strikes. And yes, you have V-Star to try and help you there, but it's all about RNG really with this deck. I've tried to make the list as simplistic as possible. Um, lots of ball search, three brooklets, acro bikes, poker gears, and Oranguru is really our only engine to the deck. I mean, it's simple, it's not effective. But we'll be jumping into the ladder and rounding off this first rogue week um, with the most fun deck we could possibly have. So let's get in there. You can see win streak of one. I've just flipped six heads against uh, two EV Snorlaxes for my first win of the day with Slowbro. So I think it's time to stick the recorder on. You can see for the strengths of the deck, I've put Ohit Kyo Potential with a nice little asterisk there because you can hit 300 with this deck. You just need to have coin flips on your side. So. That's the big uh, big selling point. Also, I you may notice I have some background music on for the first time. Let me know if you like it. It's just something like murmuring down in the background. I think I'll only ever have like instrumentals and stuff in the background. Um, but it's better than just silence, I guess. So, uh, yeah, trying out some music and uh, rounding off Rogue Week, which is another like experiment, I guess. But I think it's been well received and it might be something I do maybe monthly or at least once. Um, Every new set, I'll try and dedicate a week towards new rogues that come out. So, I think that would be a lot of fun. So, we want to see GX decks, obviously. Because if you see GXs, it means you need to flip, like, two heads to one-shot things. Whereas, like, when you see non-GXs, you still need to hit two heads to one-shot things. Because they normally have, like, 130 or 120 hit points or whatever. So, um, Initially, I thought I'd set myself the rule of having to use... Uh, V-Star Victini if we didn't flip three heads every time uh, to increase the chance that we just lose the ourselves the game, but I think there's enough meme potential here that you'd rather see the high rolls than the low rolls, I think, at least. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Good thing we have our monkey here. We have lots of ball search, actually. Looks like we're going to Zoroark archetype. Zoroark's scary because it can shut down our V-Star, which is never... That good for us. We're gonna get all of our pokes down and try and instruct here. Yeah. Look at this setup. What more do you need? Uh, I don't think he can knock us out next turn without DC Kakui on the Lele. Oh, let's attach active. We have Yawn to send him to sleep, maybe. We can use an Aqua Patch to set up our next Slowpoke in the back. And it looks like we're just going to use Yawn here. Trapping the Lele would be awesome. And they do flip tails. If we could trap this Lele and get an easy two prizes on it, that could be awesome. That's the dream. Our opponent didn't have a great start either. They only got one, uh, one Zerua down. So they are slightly limited. Oh hey, he's playing slow pokes too. I imagine he's playing slow kings and not slow bros, but we'll see. See our opponent grabs Ditto. Definitely scared of a low and muck. We only play a couple Guzmas in here because typically you're looking for your next DCE for your next slow bro, so we can't really like we don't have a huge amount of control about that sort of stuff. Our opponent is able to trade once to find themselves the DCE Guzma combo. It's pretty nice for them. So let's send up our next slow poke. We're just going to burn this poker gear because we don't want to draw into it. And we're going to try and Cynthia here. I don't think I want to stretch her back to slow poke. We already have a good number out. We get ourselves DCE, Brooklet Hill, a couple acrobikes. We have reasonable odds. Uh, is this 
Volcanian Worth. Yeah, Sauna Blast is really good against setting up these Zoros. Could also force him into this guy. Obviously, he can ace a roller it, but we could take three prize on it as well. We'll see what the acrobikes bring us. We definitely want this patch. Uh, I think we've got to take the lily here. So it looks like I'm probably just attaching and patching to the Volk Prism. Patch, attach. Yawn with the Lily as our backup. Now, I promised myself I wouldn't be using the Vault too much, but in a matchup like this, it actually is just so important to do it. I promised myself I'd be flipping as many coins as possible. So, we'll be trying to embrace the meme, but this Vault Prism keeps any of these, like, Zeruas coming down in check, so we only need to flip two heads on our guy. We're... Uh, Kind of concerned if this ditto becomes a uh, muck, because it shuts us down three of our bench Pokemon. So it's like an OP parallel. It's like a Cyrus Prism Star, really, if he's able to get muck here, which would be super scary. Looks like we get another energy on Marsh Champ, and then just going to route his beating. We are three patches down. We do draw an energy. We can now go ahead and grab the Slowpoke. Lily, some cards. We do find ourselves access to a Slowbro, which I definitely want to evolve this Ditto here, just so that's no longer a headache for us. And we'll just go for the Sauna Blast here. We're hoping to sort of like regain back an attachment by letting this guy tank so we can put an energy somewhere. Opponent's still only limited to one trade, which is the only thing really going for us at the moment. You could also consider something like Choice Band in the deck, of course, if you want to have an easier time against some Zoroark and. It's only really Zoro up, to be honest, because the tag teams... It doesn't matter if you have a choice band or not, of the amount of flips you need to hit. It's only really Zoro. So the opponent's going to have to evolve their Ditto into Zoro up, which is great for us, because it's not a muck. So, that's a dream. I get another trade going. See Guzma. He's gonna go for our slow bro. He knows the real threat. The three CE. And they're gonna go for Rice's beating. We pick up a slow bro. We're going to attach a water to him. Uh, we'll get the one instruct card going. This can just be burned. I don't think we want any of these cards. Uh, there's not much reason to not put one of these down there, right? Just a thin. wonder what would be better here. Possibly this is more useful. Stretcher could be good for slow bro. They have played a judge though, so I'm not expecting too much hand disruption. Let's go for the Sauna Blast. The opponent is three attacks away from winning the game, so we need to try and get some three strikes of our own pretty soon. We really want him to not have Gust this turn. Even if it's an Acer Roller, we don't want to see him get a Lycan Rock. That's the thing we're most afraid of. Especially if it's for a uh, Slowbro. Well, 
Well, we see the Machamp get the DC, so now he can Acme of Heroism for the full value. And we've actually got rid of both of our Guzmas, and this guy is actually, the Jet guys is the only other way we have around this. So I think we got a Psy Power for one prize this turn. Everything's looking pretty ugly though. <laughs> Let's be honest, we haven't used uh, three strikes yet, which is the idea of the deck. And unfortunately, it's hard to chain three strikes, especially if... Well, Zorark's one of our hardest matchups regardless, but... Uh, we'll take out this Rockruff. Next turn, hope that we can flip enough heads to knock this out. And then hope that the opponent can't find enough bench Pokemon to deal with the Slowbro. It's probably our win condition. It's not looking great though, I'll be honest. Zoroark definitely one of the decks that's going to have a good time against this. Effectively 300 damage uh, hit points. Pretty rough. They have healing. They're constantly putting pressure on us. Okay, let's see if we can get a heroic three strikes off to at least go out in some glory here. We don't play any hand disruption for the opponent, so we will literally just attach in three strikes here. Let's try again. Oh, almost so pog. Well played. So there's our first loss. I mean, realistically, we want one win. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for one win. That's all we need for me to be content. And Zoroark is one of our hardest matchups, so we're not done yet. We're going straight back in for another game, and we'll see what else we can face. Then again, every real deck is actually a problem apart from Reshizard. Reshizard's like the only beacon of hope we have stealing a win. Moo Moo Milk. Someone else is memeing. We play. Ha we once again play no hand disruption. So once they get the the Moo Moo Milks in hand, there's nothing we can do to stop his damage. That's a three prize Pokemon in the active, which is not bad for us. If we can flip enough heads, we'll be Gucci. We have all four DCs, we have all four Aqua Patches. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the monkey here. We'll see if we can get some more three strikes rolling this game. I'll not take this so we can instruct instead. We'll just get more slow pokes. We like having these as early as possible so that we can aqua patch to them. Seems fine. Don't think we need to bench this right now, so we'll just send it our opponent's way. We're threatening potentially 300 damage next turn, which could be quite fun. Our opponent has a Gladian start. If they don't find a basic, we could donk them. Imagine. All we need is three heads in a row. See Nest Ball, so we can't just win the game. 
Oh, they're a Guardian. This is theoretically not the worst matchup we could have. <laughs> theoretically, there are worse matchups out there. Alright, so we've taken our first three prizes. That's guaranteed. That's not a draw supporter. Uh, I guess we'll just take our first three prizes of the game here. What? Outrageous. <laughs> Monk S. You never want to see that. <laughs> The reflip. You gotta believe in the reflip. Oh wow, they play DCEs themselves. Yikes. It's pretty bad for us. Of course, because they're a milk cannon deck. Of course they play DCEs. What am I talking about? Also going to Mina. So the active, so they can Megaton friends for the full value. They want a big hand. Let's go. Okay. So we need the help of Instructor to get us into... Ooh. Ooh. Now then. Now this is truly the biggest Instruct of our lifetime. Pog. Let's go. Woo! Okay, so we've already rolled the dice that turn with the Instruct, but now we literally need to roll the dice. Let's go. Very good. We will take the knockout, please. Slowbro has only gone and taken his first victim. We need to try and work in some aqua patches of it, hopefully. I'm hoping it's hard for the opponent to get a response on us. Just based on what sort of deck they are. I see counter gain and bat on. So with gain, they can actually go attach, mina, gain, collider storm. Dead are going to greens here. So we are free flips from glory. And just green for double milk. Okay. And they're going to set up that mill tank. Also, shout out to his, uh, his name at the top. He's embracing it. So we'll ultra ball out our next slow bro. We'll bike. We're basically looking for DCs and patches. Poker Gear could be a better draw supporter here. Could also just be a blank, which is fine. We can still Lily for three. Patch is probably just going to go onto our slow bro here. Seeing as they were out of draw supporters and whatnot. Okay. Easy win. Uh oh. <laughs> Jeez, what a roller coaster of emotions this deck is. My goodness. Right, do they have any heals for this boy? Outside of their Moo Moo Milks? Theoretically, he could spend two Moo Moo Milks on healing this and still have enough damage to knock out everything in our deck. So... They could genuinely use Moo Moo Milk to heal in this matchup. Next level plays, I know. We're going to see a Greens. Uh, 
and let's see what they can grab here. More movie milk and a switch. Seems good. See a DC to the back. There's the switch. They are indeed going to spend a movie milk. They get the double heads, Pog. Now we eat it three heads against them. That's value. That's the value milk. Otherwise, they may have had to play another milk here. That's really weird that it reveals one at a time. But sure. So it's actually very difficult for us to uh, chain attacks, especially based on our hand here. So I think we're just going to go for win. Go for broke, as we should. In a deck like this. I'm going to put down the Victini just to draw an instruct card here. Uh, okay. Trust the monkey. Let's trust the monkey. We need the patch. If we don't win, we need the the patch for sure. All right. Too bad it's already over. Don't even need to... Oh, crumbs. Okay. So we're below average so far on our strikes. But there's more opportunities energy switch. This might be just so they can retreat. That'll be down to our last Guzma to see if we can close the game. <laughs> I'd have to instruct into a slow bro or a stretcher with two slow, well, three slow bros that will be in the discard pile and three ultra balls. Yikes, dude. How many hit two heads, of course. Can we get over the line against this Moo Moo deck? It's the most epic battle I've possibly ever had. They're gonna bat on, sure. And they're gonna milk cannon. Well, Guzma is the plan. That was actually a bad draw for us. Be the hero. Let's go. Instruct. Oh! We have a chance. Oh no. Oh no! Oh, Pog. Nice. We got our win. We got our win. Yay. We up trade. Oh wow, our odds are actually super low. <laughs> we prized the three other outs. We had one out. Oh my god, I didn't actually realize how low our outs was there. So we prized double stretcher and ultra ball, which were like the three other outs than the physical slow bro. So we got super lucky there. That's nuts. What was it? it was 13 cards left in deck? Drawing two? Well, you do have to ride the luck with this deck, so. Let's get one more game with Slowbro, just for the, for completionist's sake. Let's try and get another sick win with this archetype. You can pepper up some damage for us.
We're always going to kick off with the monkey. I feel like the deck just relies on it, like, a lot, so... Mew is going to make this less of an auto-loss, which is good. It's got a free card. Is it an energy card? No, but it's a playable. Now we get some energy cards. That's real nice. Ooh, well, we enjoy seeing GXs. That's the good news. There's a Zero Aura that we might be goosebring next turn. Doesn't look like our hand is doing anything else. We may have to Ultra Ball and try and uh, instruct into some more stuff. Aqua patches are so vital. Like our next aqua patch, our next slow bro, our next DCE. Have to try and dig towards those. Our opponent actually had a real slow turn. Real slow. I'm gonna ultra pull away our next Guzma and energy. It gets a slow bro out of the deck and it gives us a chance of drawing into Aqua Patch, which is pretty important for us. Let's try and chain this if he is able to get a peeker on going. Nice. It's about chaining those three strikes. The attack cost is hefty, so you've got to try and find Aqua Patches all the time. Right, let's see if we can take our first two prize knockout. Very good. Racing ahead with slow bro. Easy as. Easy as that, boys. The opponent can do all sorts to try and get a response knockout, though. Dance of the Ancients, E Switch shenanigans, Finding Thunder Mountain. A whole load of stuff. The opponent has to burn some E-Powers just to draw two off Lily here. They do have a Let Loose, though. I don't hate the Let Loose. Our hand wasn't great. We always have the Instruct to fall back on. Now the hand is way better. <laughs> way better hand. They draw more Mars Shadows. Do they have a Dedene here as well? No, they're just going to have to send us the easy... The easy prize. Even for us, this is an easy prize. So the path to victory is knock out a Marshadow and knock out a Picarom. Is this going to be another win for the slow bros? Let's read on. I know, like, we're always forced into this choice. I'm just thinking if I want to play it or not. I don't even want to play this. I probably do want to play Cynthia, though. I guess I could play this. Mm, yeah, we could play this. I need to check our other stretches in deck. Yeah. Again, the intention of just finding Aqua Patches is too tempting to say no to. Look at these bros. They're just they're just so ready to go, man. Uh-oh. Not like this. Not like this! Oh! <laughs> Not like this. Not when we actually have a chance to win. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be heartbreaking if we six tails into this guy. Picaron rarely plays heals, though. The only concern is that both Guzmas have gone. So, like, if we just hit this a bit, he can, like, retreat into the next thing, and then we hit something else for a bit. 
you know. You can get a bit ugly. Possibly we can... Um, oh no, he's got a second peak run down as well now. Yeah. It's going to be scary. Still real hard for us, believe it or not. But it's too late because we've already flipped three heads and won the game. So... Easy, easy win. Easy matchup, easy life. We're just going to thin some cards. We want to, like, just thin the deck as much as we can. So we have one more patch. Play it just yet. Will I? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will. Like, he should be going through the active every time here, right? I'm also going to play this just in case we find our DCE. Yeah. Because it changes what we promote next turn. <sighs> Let's go. Yes, I would like to reflip. Okay. Good RNG. Of course he can retreat and this then becomes like irrelevant damage. The only like good part about this damage is we can like jet geyser. But we're actually running out of water energies. My friend's actually gonna Guzma the uh, the Mew here. Even putting this down, plays around our Jet Geyser. Perfectly played. We'll get back to this Mew. And we'll just three strikes. Do we want to flip again? <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Good question. Um, yes, I think we have to say yes to this. Value. That's that's the value that we're after right there. That's a really nice prize to take as well. Okay. Here's the next zap. See a dance of the ancients. Do they have another Guzma for the Mew again? Two Guzmas played. The deck typically plays three copies of Guzma. Nope, just a full blitz into the active. Okay. Well, time to detonate him with three strikes, right? Easiest three strikes of our lives. We gotta reflip, right? We gotta go for it. We gotta go for broke. Okay. This is basically the same as doing 200, because you can just retreat around this stuff anyway. I think we actually lose a good amount of times now. <laughs> Which is a bit ugly. So I guess now they Lele Guzman and Guzman the Mew. But also Guzman the Victini, I guess. Okay, so he's trying to set up for win with a tag bolt next turn. With a non-GX in the active, we can use our 
jet geyser here, and we have reasonable odds of winning with our beautiful Volk. Let's go. Get out of here. Give me one of these two heads flips. Let's go! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> the betrayal! No! So now if he has enough energy switch cards, we just lose. No! I can't even watch anymore. We could have had it all. Oh. Thunder Mountain. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, I feel so sad. Oh, they have turn attach, right? Oh. Oh, they don't have it? They need to dig for it? No! <laughs> No! So unlucky. <laughs> well, that was everything I thought it would be. Poor slow bro. Almost coming up with the goods against Picarom. Feels bad, man. Hope you enjoyed Rogue Week, guys. Uh, tomorrow I'll be talking about the uh, top 10 decks for the NAIC, and then I'll be basically playing NAIC decks in the build-up to... Uh, to that tournament next week. So yeah, I saw uh, some interesting stuff at Origins and there's also the tournament going on in Sweden this weekend. So hopefully there'll be some new decks to try out as well as like just the top six or so decks that we all expect already. So let me know what you guys think about the list and the archetype. How many heads have you flipped in a row on three strikes? Have you struck out before with that six tails story? I'll hear it all down below. Thanks for watching though and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.